Let's go red. Let's light it up. Let's invite God's presence into this place. Come on, God. You're so good. doing this morning God we thank you so much for your presence we thank you so much for your goodness for your kindness we pray that you would be with us today um, as we sit together as the family of faith uh, to reflect and to lean into who you are and who you called us to be be with us today in Jesus name amen all right all right all right yo what's up y'all yo welcome to good news today where we um, we, you know, we open up God's word. We, many of us have a cup of coffee or a, or a cup of tea or orange juice or tequila, tequila. Uh, hey, for some of y'all, I know it's been a rough season. No judgment. I'm just saying, be careful. Be careful. Um, <laughs> but yo. Uh, we gather together with the word of God, hot tea, and always hot fire. Let's go. It's a new week, y'all. Let's go. Everything. Come on. Great job, Crazy Purple. No coffee for 100 days. Congratulations. Yo, put it in the comments. Let somebody know. Yo, turn my mic up. Y'all ain't see this coming. Yo, come on, get ready to catch this. Come to stand your righteous mind, not your edges. God is the goal, and then that's the very act. This thing is real. Woo, child. Serious, intentional, the original. God is in control. Do it for your soul. Gotta let the whole world know. Hey, yo, hey, come on. Pastor Dane, what up, fam? Everything gonna be okay. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Yo. Everything's gonna be okay, y'all. Everything. Everything is gonna be okay. Everything is gonna be okay. Yo, as we start this new week. Um, well, a couple of things we just got to acknowledge in the world. Um, Lakers uh, took it on home last night. Um, one sports writer said something so profound. He says they were touched by heaven. And last night, they touched heaven. Um, it is a big deal out here in L.A. Um, because... Um, uh, we lost Kobe Bryant this year, so it's almost like an honor and remembrance of of Kobe. So, for sure, um, much love to the Lakers. Much, much love to the Lakers. Um, the um, I kind of want to talk about. I want to talk about seasons. It was, um, you know, out here in California, it's only in certain pockets that we actually get a glimpse of, of fall. Fall is one of my uh, favorite seasons of the year because of the trees, because of the, it ain't cold, it's, but you can pull out a nice sweater. 
you know, this time of year is a really big deal for fat people. And no, it really is. We, we, we wrestle through summer, but when fall comes, we get to layer up. So we get to cover up stuff. We get to add a jacket. We could do a vest. We could do scars. We can cover up layers. You know what I mean? In the summer, you just got to go with a t-shirt and you just, it just is what it is. The rows are exposed. It's just all out there. And, you know, for some folks, it's fine being out there, but I'm, I'm old school with that. I want to cover it up. I ain't trying to just let it all hang out. Young school fat, new school fat. And I, I'm not, a, I ain't ashamed, I ain't oppressed, I ain't none of that. I'm just, you know how, I'm, I'm, you know how it says, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Well, I'm fat and I know it and I want to cover it up uh, for, for me. I ain't, you know, <laughs> you know, it's this whole thing now. It's like, um, I'm not covering up my body. Don't child, I ain't mad at you. Go on, boo. Let it out. Let it all hang out for the glory of God. Don't nobody need to walk around loving Jesus. Shame. I ain't shame. I'm just not generous. I'm just not ready to share all of that with all of y'all. Some of you are comfortable. Some of you are more generous with your roles than I am. I'm not that generous with my roles. I don't want to. I don't want to share my roles. I don't want to share it. Some of y'all ain't got no problem with that at all. And I ain't mad at that. So don't come for me. I didn't sin for you. Don't come for me. Y'all go on, do you. But but when the fall comes, I get to put a sweater over some of this stuff. I get to cover up. I get to do layers. You know what I'm saying? Rather be popping, popping. <laughs> so I'm excited about the fall. Although in California, where we live, we don't have much of a fall. But, uh, but I'm excited to cover it up. I'm excited to cover it up and get some good layers and dress. And then I just like clothes. I like... I like I like dressing up, so I, you get a chance to, you know, you got more options in the fall. I, at least I feel like anyway. Anyway, enough of that. You know, stuff just you just get in trouble. I could just get in trouble. It's, so let me just change the subject. With seasons, though, um, it's interesting. There's a sense of um, of sobriety sobriety with seasons God operates in seasons he operates in seasons he created seasons one one way of looking at seasons is 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 a full-on acknowledgement that change is inevitable change is inevitable so God looks at seasons as a reminder. It, it, it's built into, it's built into the, the ecosystem. It's built into our economy um, of, of, of doing things that change is inevitable. Change is inevitable. So you'll wonder why we'd be so surprised when change comes and when it happens. Because Jesus says, you're going to live in a world where change is going to happen every, every three, four months. It's going to happen four times a year. It's a different season. And in different seasons, things just have to readjust. You got to realign. So the idea that, for, that, that the goal is for us to be settled and comfortable and everything's just supposed to be normal and settled is just not realistic. You got to almost wonder, where do we even get that from? There's seasons, there's seasons, there's seasons. So there, there are seasons and then there are assignments in seasons. There are assignments in seasons. This is my assignment for this season. But the assignments are also seasonal. The assignments are also seasonal. And 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 here's the thing every season doesn't produce fruit but the season is still necessary every season doesn't always produce flowers but the season is still necessary 
because in seasons where there's nothing on the trees, it doesn't mean that there's nothing going on in the ecosystem. And what he's saying is there are seasons when it is necessary. Yes, Nicole, they, they think I'm just talking about seasons. I'm preaching already. I'm, I'm coming in already. I'm coming in like a stealth bomber. You, you can sleep on me if you want to and don't think I'm coming for you. But I'm coming for you out the gate on this Monday. I had two days off. I'm ready, okay? <laughs> there are seasons where there's no leaves on the trees, but they're still an assignment and the season is still necessary and you still gotta walk through the season. So, so, so many times as believers, we honestly think every season is gonna feel like spring. every season is going to have leaves and fruit on the trees and it's just not realistic and to be honest it's a sign of spiritual immaturity not to grow and see the rhythms of god and not learn from them it's a sign of immaturity to to be devastated every time winter comes because maturity says I've been here before. I know how this ends. I can go through winter because I know that rent winter is just a season. And so my maturity says there are seasons and there are assignments in seasons. And yes, we all get an assignment in winter. Yes, we all get an assignment in winter. And, and some winters are more harsh than others. We, everybody wants and knows that the call of God is greatness. So although the call of God is greatness, every assignment won't be great. I'll say that again. The call of God is to greatness, yes, but every assignment ain't gonna be great. Every so as we come out of this 100 days and as we look at 2020, I, I need you to be sobered and matured so that you might see what God is doing. And I need you to own, own these words when you say it. God is the goal, period. God is the goal, period. That means leaves ain't the goal flowers ain't the goal in this season god is the goal period because you can come through a season with god and have no leaves on the tree and it still be all good because it was all god and it was a part of the assignment and the calling for that season Because some of you, the enemy is lying to you and he uses uh, leaveless trees as a weapon against you. You will look out in coming out of a winter season, you'll see no leaves, you'll see no flowers, and you will assume that there was no fruit. You will assume that it was in that it was unproductive you would assume that it accomplished nothing and i'm telling you sometime that's the assignment 
for that season. And if God is the goal, period, then don't add a comma and try to put leaves and flowers at the end. You said God was the goal, period. So let God be the goal, period. I didn't get flowers in this season, but I got God. Because God operates in seasons. In seasons, in seasons. We spent last week acknowledging Isaiah in chapter six, and it was beautiful because we talked about a little bit this amazing worship experience that he had. And then we talked about this amazing transformative, uh, transforming uh, ex encounter that he had that transformed his life and he experienced the redemption of God's hand. And then we talked about this powerful commissioning that he had, where he went from woe is me to send me, where now he was available to God for God to use him. This is where we usually celebrate, take the offering and keep on moving. Usually, why would this, but 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 sit down. Let's stay here, another further. Let, let let's lean in a little bit. You ever wonder what was Isaiah's assignment? Y'all know all through our church, we talk about Isaiah. I saw the Lord. We talk about the worship. We talk about the encounter. We talk about Isaiah dying and that being the pivotal thing that unleashed his greatness. Usually, we don't stick around to hear where God sent him. But it's in here. But we usually don't sit around on this part because you know what? Because it's not shouting material. And in our infinitesimal minds, we don't know what to do with the with the story that ends with such a dynamic that we see in Isaiah. We don't know how, we don't know where to put it. So we just don't touch it. We step off the stage at what we feel as if the culmination is, and that is his commissioning. No, him fulfilling the assignment, just him hearing the assignment. Come on, let, let's preach it all the way through. So for better or for worse, you're going to hear it today. Check it out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Come on in here. Many of us have said this, here am I, send me. He said, all right, he said, here's the assignment. I want you to go and tell this people, listen to this, be ever hearing, but never understanding, be ever seeing, but never perceiving, make the heart of this people calloused, make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Then I said, Lord, for how long, Lord? And he answered, well, listen to this, until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged, until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. I'll stop right there. Who, who, who want to go on that assignment? He said, I want you to go preach. I want you to preach until they can't hear nothing. I want you to preach until their hearts are so calloused. Lest they hear and heal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean, you mean you want me to go and initiate winter? You want me to go and, re you want me to shut it down? He said, for how long do you want me to preach this a message that causes them not to even hear? He says, until they all die, until the city dry up, until it ain't nobody left. I want you to preach until the church is empty, till everybody leave or die. Congratulations. Be used of God for his glory. Amen. God calls us to greatness, but every assignment ain't great. I, 
I um I resonate with this. When I was 21, I started uh preaching and um not too long after that, my bishop assigned me to go and pastor a church. I wasn't trying to do none of that, but the bishop was like, "Oh man. Yo, Instagram just jumps off." I mean, it literally just jumped off. Y'all hold on a second. Because I'm doing my good teaching today. I don't know what that is. All right, I'm going to give them a second to jump back on. Give them a second to jump back on. So, um, I'm in Pelahatchee. Mississippi. This is a little small town and the bishop assigns me um, to pastor there. Now, I never pastored before. I'm 21, y'all. Um, and I'm there pastoring. And some of you heard this story uh, before in IG and it's all good. Okay. Some of, some of you heard this story today, story before. I pastored, y'all. I wasn't even married yet. I was dating. I was dating Laurel at the time. I took on this church. It's about 14, 15 people at the church. It's about 14, 15 people at the church. If now you need to know that whenever pastors quote how many folks were at the church, they take the highest attendance and they say that's how many came. So real talk on a high level, on my high Sunday, I have 14 to 21 people, 14 to 21 people. That means on a regular Sunday, regular, on a regular Sunday, on a regular Sunday, we had about six or seven people. We had about six or seven people. So and this is no hyperbole. La Rosa can, can verify this. My family was there. And, 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 and let's keep it real. I got a big family. Some of them was my cousins, my mama, my, my aunties, my godmama, just helping your boy out, just trying to be faithful. My sisters, they just, just trying to help, just trying to fill the audience. But, um, but I go in there and I preach. And it is, it is some of the most depressing, some of the most depressing uh, times because you just look out and and you just see more people. And the church was tiny, and I couldn't even feel the church could probably only hold thirty people. Like Isaiah said, I say, "How long, Lord?" And when I tell this story, most people think, oh, it must, it must have been like that for what, six months or a year? How long did you, how long? We were there for over five years. Over five years. And we had some peak moments where we hit like 27 people, 22 people. But on the regular, it was about 10, 7, and 7 to 14 people. 7 to 14 people for five years. Five to six years, five to six years. I come with vision, I come with new ideas. We remodeled the sanctuary, we got other good stuff. We was raising money, I was able to get it out, all that. But we still was just right there, just right there. A part of me knowing that God wanted to do great things with my life and I had all these ambitions and all these dreams and all these, God, there's an anointing on my life for greatness, there's an anointing. And so I got all this ambition, all of this, um, all of all of this drive, and I said, "God, you're gonna get some glory out of this." I don't know what you're doing with this story. And I remember getting ready to leave that church. I left that church coming to California, so it wasn't even like it was this new. No, I left that church moving to California. Y'all, I said, "Well, Lord, maybe I was here to sow, sow the seed, and God's about to do something great." The new pastor after me, um, I mean, you you shouldn't say this about pastors. I mean, he, he let, me, let me just not say that at all. 
I was not hopeful. I was not hopeful. Um, so sorry, the live feed is frozen. It's probably the area in which I live. Yeah. Um, I thought God would break. You know, I thought it was one of those things where 15, 10 years later, I'll be able to say, God used that church. Revival broke out. I sold the seed. And now it's an amazing establishment. It's still there. We're doing great things. Under there. Yeah. Six months after I left um, or so, the church actually closed. Church actually, actually, for all sins and purposes, the church died. So in my mind, I'm trying to make theological sense of this because God, I labored, labored, I labored in this church for five years, giving it everything I had and the church closed, the church died. So on my resume, I'm going to be walking around talking about I passed it in Mississippi. Oh, where is the church? It's dead. Did I labor and kill the church? God, how do I celebrate that? How do I celebrate? How do I celebrate after I got done with it? It, it died? It died? So I, 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 I didn't have, I didn't have a legacy story. I can't point you to the church and there's a live work going on right now. But I, so I was trying to figure out, Lord, is it, it's, it's not that I seeded it and I labored it and I'm going to get fruit later. Sometimes you say, well, sometimes you just ain't going to see the fruit in this season. You see it in the next season. No, ain't no fruit coming out of a dead church. Ain't nothing coming out of there. It's dead. And then the Lord just had to help me. He says, Albert, son, let me help you. It wasn't about your, it wasn't about your, your legacy. This assignment wasn't about, this assignment wasn't even about leaves. What if this, what if the assignment, God, and God just said, he said, what if the assignment wasn't about fruitfulness? Oh God, what do you mean? It's all about this. He says, Albert, what if this assignment was about faithfulness? I didn't have a legacy. I don't have a bunch of stories of revival breaking out. But I was faithful. I was faithful. I was faithful. Can I just tell you today? Can I give you a sobering word on this Monday? Sometimes the assignment is faithfulness. Sometimes God says, it ain't about the fruit. It ain't about breaking through revival. It ain't about even changing the world. I know we get all these great ambitions and those are fine in its due season. But what if you're in a season where the goal is God, period, and you just got to be faithful? All I'm going to get out of this is God. Ain't nobody going to thank me. Ain't nobody going to celebrate me because ain't nobody even going to see it. But all I get is God and he gets my faithfulness. What if that was the foundation of the relationship and that was all that went through in this season? His godness and your faithfulness. His godness and your faithfulness. Some of you are in the fight of your life and folks around you trying to dream big and do another kind of stuff. And you think my biggest dream is to wake up breathe, feed these kids, get this house in order, get work done, and try to get to bed on time. If I could pull that off multiple times in one week, I'm winning. And God says, daughter, you're winning. 
my son, you're winning because the goal in this season is faithfulness. No, you might not have a lot of extra money in this season. No, you might not have a lot of time and doing a service and who if any other time I would have been given this, I would have been doing this. I would have been I would have showed up for you. I would have done it. Yeah, maybe this ain't that kind of season. Maybe this is a season and in this winter the goal is just for you to be faithful and to recognize that God is the goal period. As, if, as long as I can keep God, as long as I can get God. That's what you said. So don't say it and put the period behind it, behind it and then try to add a comma and add other stuff. If I could get God, but I, if I could also get get this, or if I could also make good on this book, make good on this, take this class, maybe instead of adding a class, maybe you need to delete a class. Hello and here's somebody. That there are people that have been talking about now that you got all this time in the pandemic, you need to maybe gain ground on your business. Maybe this is a season for you to lose ground. Because every season with God is not progressive. Sometimes he takes you back so he can take you forward. I know you don't like this because ain't nobody in culture telling you this. And I know I'm over my time, but I don't, I got two days built up. I'm gonna go a little longer today because I need to get this word out. Ain't nobody in culture gonna tell you to back up. Ain't nobody in culture gonna tell you to slow down. Ain't nobody in culture gonna tell you to take less, do less. But maybe you need to slow down and set the goal as God and not anything else. That, that there's a pruning motif in in scripture I, I don't i don't i don't have time to unpack it fully maybe we'll go to this tomorrow but there's a pruning motif in scripture that says and some of you know this if you if you do roses you know this. you gotta cut them back so that they can grow plentiful you gotta cut them back so let me just help you i know we celebrated isaiah last week in this big victory but i do you a disservice if i didn't tell you the rest of the story and we're gonna get to the end it's redemptive it's beautiful but it ain't fruit it ain't it ain't it ain't amazingly fruitful fruitful like you think it is at least for a season it ain't sometimes god calls you to do hard things for a really long time with the only result being god's pleasure and your faithfulness And we tripping because we don't give out awards for that. But we should. Because sometimes that's the assignment. Be faithful. Some of you with the 100 days, that's that was the whole goal. It wasn't for you to get a new car. It wasn't for you to give a, get, a, get this new breakthrough. It was for you to get a new revelation. And the revelation was there's something powerful and significant about being faithful a just a practice of being faithful all right y'all i didn't broke my rules i know we we gonna we gonna be we gonna pick this right up tomorrow y'all come we're talking about seasons and faithfulness in seasons this week don't miss a day tell somebody meet us good news today i'll see y'all tomorrow